Do your deep sky astrophotography photographs taken with a 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens turn out looking like garbage? Mine sure do, but we're gonna try to take care of that by stacking and using Photoshop. If you saw my last video, I took about 60, 65 photographs using this lens, and then I put the lens cap on and took a few more. We're gonna stack those together in a software called Sequitur. You could also use Deep Sky Stacker, or if you're on a Mac, I think it's called Starry Sky Stacker. Then we're gonna go into Photoshop. I'm gonna to try to use Photoshop as is, but there's one plugin that I always use, and I had to pay for it. It's called Gradient Exterminator, 60 bucks. I highly recommend this plugin. It's gonna fix a lot of problems. I'm not gonna take you through the entire hour to two hour long process that I usually go through. I'm just gonna show you a few uh, tips and tricks I've learned along the way to fix the problems that specifically come with this lens. So we're gonna take the photograph from looking like this to looking like this. So enough talking, let's hit it. I meant go to the computer. Okay, before we jump into Sequitur, let's just look at the photos that we took the other night. They look something like this. Not very impressive. We're going to fix that. There's a lot of noise in here, and that's why we're going to stack them all together to remove that noise. Uh, all, the, uh, all the photos that I took with the lens cap on are in a separate folder called Darks, just to keep everything organized. Also, I'll just let you know that I went through here, and any photograph that looked a bit off, maybe the wind blew the camera or something and caused star blur, I got rid of those. So everything's uh, ready to go into Sequitur. So let's open that up. All right, Sequitur is open. We're gonna click star images up here at the top. And we're gonna click on the first image of Andromeda. Hold shift and click the last one and open. These are raw files, so it takes a few seconds. 63 raw files, actually. All right, now we're gonna add the dark frames. They call them noise images here. Let's click that. Go to our darks folder. Click the first one, hold shift, and click the last one, and click open. All right. Now we are, uh, what are we, yeah. We're going to open output and just tell it where to save the, the final file. I'm gonna put it in this folder called for YouTube. I'm gonna call it Andromeda. As you can see, I've already saved this, so, um, I just don't have to do it twice to save some time, but yeah, just give it a name, tell it where to save, and click save. The last thing we're going to do is click accumulation right here. And you probably can't see this because um, my face is in the way, so we're going to minimize this maybe. We're going to see if we can drag this over so you can see the bottom of the screen here. There we go. So we've clicked accumulation, now we're going to go down to select best pixels and move that up to strict and this is in case you have any uh, airplanes or satellites or anything moving through your photographs and, and that's it that's it we hit start after that so go ahead and hit start and we're gonna go into Photoshop and open up the saved file okay now we're in Photoshop and we've got the photo open that we just stacked in sequitur um, the first thing I'm gonna do make sure my zoom tool is clicked and just click fit screen all right not a whole lot to look at right now, but that's about to change. We're going to go over here to our background layer, right click, click duplicate layer. And now I'm going to crop this. There's a lot of vignetting, a lot of dark in the edges, trying to get rid of as much of that as I can. So let's do that. Click the crop tool, just bring this in, recenter the galaxy. It's dark over here, I don't like. Bring that in. Recenter the galaxy, that looks good to me. Click the check mark for OK. And last thing we're going to do is rotate it because to me the galaxy kind of looks upside down right now. So image, image rotation 180 degrees. I like Andromeda and that orientation much better. All right, let's, uh, let's start adjusting some levels, shall we? Image, adjustments, levels. Now we're going to drag, this is the dark area of our photograph, drag that into the edge of the histogram that's getting rid of any light pollution, kind of darkening the area. Let's drag the lights in a little bit. Let's go start brightening our photograph. There we go. Bring that in a touch. We're just really starting to bring out some detail in the, in the galaxy, a little contrast. All right. Let's click OK. 
Let's go back over here to the zoom tool and click fit screen. All right. All right. Let's create a new stamp layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Basically, what that does is it mixes everything we've done so far and puts it as a new layer on top. And this is kind of a non-destructive workflow. If we don't like what we did, we can delete that layer or just turn it off like this. All right. So now let's check our levels again. Image adjustments, levels. And we can bring that in a little bit more to the edge of the histogram. Let's do the individual color channels as well. Red can come in a touch. Green. Blue, blue's fine. Uh, so basically, we're just getting a nice, clean color in the background now, not a lot of light pollution. I click OK, and we're gonna do our first curve stretch. We will do that by going to Adjustments and clicking on Curves, or going to Layer, New Adjustments Layer, Curves. Select OK. Now I'm gonna click this little hand tool right here and it gives me a dropper. I'm going to take that dropper to a bright area in the galaxy and I'm going to click and drag up. Oh, that's nice. I'm starting to see a lot of detail in that galaxy now. And now we're going to click on a darker area and drag down. Just giving, giving it some good contrast. Don't want to go too crazy. One thing you don't want to see is any straight lines up here in your curve. And you don't want this... Um, if you, if you have your histogram open you don't want to see um, this go all the way to the edge here either if you, if you don't have your histogram open just go to window and click histogram it's really helpful it makes you uh, helps you to not clip anything out all right it's looking good so far but this vignetting is really bad so now is when we're gonna use the gradient exterminator that I was telling you about earlier so let's create a new stamp layer control alt shift and E put a new layer on top all right, so we'll go to Filter, RC Astro, and Gradient Exterminator. Just leave everything as is, medium, medium, balance, background color, and click OK. Ah, that's so much better. Just look at this before, after. I love it. All right, let's take a look at the levels real quick. Image, Adjustments, Levels. good let's just bring that in a touch not too much yeah that's fine click OK let's do another curve stretch so adjustments curves let's click the hand tool once again let's bring up a bright area in the galaxy Give it a good stretch and let's click a dark area and bring that down Look at all that detail we just brought out. Careful not to clip the curve over here. We don't want it to get up to the top and be a straight line. That's not good. All right, I'm liking that so far. Now we just gotta do something about these ugly red blobby stars. So let's create a new stamp layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Check the levels. Image adjustments, levels. That can be brought in just a touch. There we go. Right. First thing we're going to do is, is try to deal with these purples and reds. So we're going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. All right, we're going to go down to the Optics tab. We're going to make sure Defringe is open. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. All right, let's move this purple amount up just a little bit. And this move these up a bit as well. Let's see, that's getting rid of the red. There we go. I don't like, there's a little bit of green in there I don't like, so let's move that up too. Yeah. All right. Let's click OK. Look at the before and after. Red blob, red and purple blobs everywhere. Ah, much better. All right. Let's start. Uh, making the stars a little smaller. New stamp layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now, we're going to go to Select. Color Range. 
and we're going to choose highlights from the drop down box. Let's turn fuzziness up and range down until we get a lot of stars selected, but we don't want our uh, galaxy selected either, so let's not go too crazy with it. Just a little bit of the core in the middle, that's okay. Alright, click OK. And you can see marching ants all over the stars now. Let's zoom way in. And you can see there's little selections around the stars. But it's not selecting the entire star, so we have to expand our selection by going to Select, Modify, Expand, and we're going to expand by two pixels. There we go. Actually, with those red blobs, let's expand it a little more. Undo that, Control Z. Let's go to Select, Modify, Expand. Let's try three pixels. Yeah, I like that better. Now we're going to feather our selection because we don't want any harsh transitions here. So select, modify, feather. And we're going to feather it half of our uh, expansion. So we expanded it by three pixels. So that's 1.5. There we go. All right, let's hit fit screen or zoom out and let's hide all these marching ants so we can see what's going on. Control H to hide the marching ants. Now we're gonna bring down these stars. Filter, other, minimum. All right, let's just do it by one pixel. Don't wanna to go too crazy with it. It can make some very ugly looking halos around the stars. All right, make sure roundness is selected and hit okay. As you can see, it got rid of a lot of stars or made them smaller. Let's look at before. Looks like somebody sneezed all over the photo. After. I like that. That looks really good. Except for the horrendous star coloration I got going on here. So let's see if we can chill some of that out. New stamp layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. First, let's do something about these orangey yellow stars. Zoom right on in. Select color range and then this time we're going to do sampled colors it'll give us a little dropper here we're just going to cl uh, click on an orangey area right there and move the fuzziness up until a lot of orange stars are selected that's way too much here we go and let's click OK and just like we did when we were making the stars smaller we're going to click select modify Expand. I'm just going to do that by two pixels. Select Modify Feather. And since we expanded that by two, feather it by one. Let's zoom out and hide the marching ants again. Control H. Right. Now we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Vibrance and our vibrance controls over the top and so now it's we're going to just turn those down and it's just going to bring that color down on the selected stars I don't want to kill too much star color but these purples and reds and oranges are just just really out of control so I think that helped a lot let's do the same thing with these purple uh, stars now new stamp layer control alt shift and E Zoom in on a purplish area. Yeah, that's, that's just terrible. Select, color range. Let's try to do this a little faster now if I can. S select purple here. Turn fuzziness up. All those purple stars selected. OK. Select, modify, expand. At two. Select, modify, feather. At one. OK. Zoom out, hide the marching ants, control H, layer, new adjustment layer, and vibrance. All right, let's just bring the vibrance down a little bit. Just chill those purples out. Oh, that is so much better. Yes. All right, I like it. New stamp layer, control Alt, Shift, and E. And you know what? When you keep making these new stamp layers on top, first of all, you should be uh, labeling them so you'll know where you're at. 
I'm just kind of in a hurry, so I'm not doing that right now. But also, each time you add a new layer, it makes this this file much bigger. And a lot of times, by the end of the project, uh, this thing is huge and it's slowing my computer down. I don't always like doing this, but sometimes I just merge these layers if if it uh, if the computer starts to have problems. Just kind of select them all, except the background layer. Right click and click merge layers. Now we can't go back and undo anything we've done before, so that's why I don't really recommend it. But I just did that for now, so the computer won't be slowing down. All right, so let's start bringing out some uh, some detail in um, in this galaxy. I'm gonna hit uh, Control D to make sure my last star selection isn't still there. Okay, all right. So let's do a new selection. Select color range, sampled colors. Click the dropper on an area in the galaxy I want to bring out. I kind of like this color. It's kind of a bluish green. And bring the fuzziness way down until we really just see kind of that outer edge of the galaxy there. Yeah, like that. I like that. So I'm going to click OK. You see our galaxy is selected along with a few stars, but adding a little star color back is not going to hurt my feelings. All right. Layer. New adjustments layer. Vibrance. I'm going to select OK. Let's just bring that color out a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy. You don't want it to look fake or anything, but I do like a pretty colorful galaxy. That looks nice. And let's uh, let's bring out a few more colors in the galaxy. Let's do make a new stamp layer. Control Alt Shift and E. All right. Let's do this again. Select color range. Now let's. I'm going to put the dropper right on this dust lane right here. Let's bring that out. Cool. Select OK. Layer, new adjustments layer, and vibrance. Click OK. Now let's just bring the vibrance of that area out. It's going to kind of add some orangey red back into the core of the galaxy. And that looks really cool. I like that a lot. All right. Let's do a new stamp layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Let me check my levels. in maybe a touch. All right. Now we've, we've got a little bit of noise here after all that curve stretching, so we're going to try to get rid of that. So one way you can do it is go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. click the detail tab and just start sliding up the noise reduction a little bit and if obviously if you go a little too crazy with it you're going to remove detail from your galaxy that's just a small price to pay I guess and that looks fine all right I like it now after we've done the noise reduction let's add a little sharpening to bring back some of that detail. Go to filter at the top, sharpen, unsharp mask, and use some settings kind of like this. You definitely don't want to go too high on that radius. I've seen it blow out my galaxy's core pretty bad. Let's click OK. Yeah, that definitely helped a lot. And this is going to be probably our final step. Let's create a new stamp layer. Control Shift, Alt, and E. We're going to go back to Camera Raw Filter. This is basically the program Lightroom as a plug-in. It's, it's just wonderful. Let's go to the Basic tab and just add a little bit of clarity. That looks awesome. A touch of dehaze. Not much. And do not mess with the texture, that just adds noise. 
Let's bring up the vibrance and saturation just a touch. Just some subtle changes there. I kind of like this yellowy orange area. So let's go to the color mixer and just see if this does anything. Yeah, that looks good. Let's click OK. And we're done. Save it as a JPEG and show it off to your friends on Instagram. All right, I hope you learned something from that. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. There will be more content like this coming soon. As always, stay spacey, folks. Good night.